Hey guys, Palm Boys here, and I have a very exciting video for you guys. I've been wanting to do this video for about a year now, but I really wanted to put the work in and make this a good video for you guys. So today, if you haven't read the description, it's about the Autopilot 120 full on upgrade. Now it's gonna be all the upgrades that I feel like the Autopilot 120 needs for a real Palm Boy out there on the water. Let's just jump into it. We have a lot to talk about. I mean, uh, this video, I don't know how we're gonna do it, but hopefully we can fit everything into one. Um, if you don't wanna watch it all the way through, there's gonna be multiple chapters. I do recommend you watching this all the way through, but again, there will be chapters on certain parts. So you're gonna see things uh, on the B-roll that you know might pique your interest, and that's when you can go through the chapters. So thank you guys so much. Love y'all. Uh, and let's just dive into it. Woo! Golly boys. All right, now the first update I made was my batteries. Now, not just because of the weight, but the durability of these Dakota Lithium batteries is unbelievable. Now, this is way lighter than this battery. I mean, I could ask Eli to hold this right now and he'd probably just fall over uh, with that lead battery, but you definitely have to upgrade to a lithium battery. It's lighter. It lasts, you know, three times as longer on the water than a cheaper battery. So definitely, you know, make an investment and a lithium battery. Now I've only had to charge this bad boy a couple of times and it's never ran out on me. Uh, I do charge it, you know, on my fifth to like sixth trip, that's when I'll charge it. But I've used it on spot lock in really high windy conditions and have had no problems with this battery. So you do have to go lithium guys. Like I'm telling you right now, you have to go lithium. So let me just show you um, how we install this battery. Very simple, all you have to do is open this bad boy right here. Uh, this actually comes from Old Town. This little case right here comes straight from Old Town. Really cool that it has these handles on the side. And then this strap goes all the way around like that and then locks in. So once I open it up, I just throw my battery in there like that. And the cool thing is I just take these screws off, put the positive with the positive screw that on right there just so you can't forget you know red is positive but they also have a plus sign on there so you know then you put the negative on as well super easy very simple so the cool thing is I don't know if you're supposed to do this but I know there's two handles on the side like that but I like to carry this bad boy like this when I want to just take it in and out of the car so as soon as you do that it's just plug and play really cool that you can just plug it into here just like that now with the upgrades today and all of our little maintenance that we're gonna do we are gonna be fixing things like like this right here so you gotta hammer that back in there and get it where it's supposed to go I've been using this kayak for about a year and a half relentlessly um, I've not held back I've just sent it as many times as I could and it does need some maintenance and a couple upgrades so that's what we're talking about today let's go over to um, some other things we'll talk about this 12 volt uh, battery a little bit later this is what I connect my graph to uh, everything on this kayak is plug and play absolutely love how I have it set up uh, we'll dive into the wiring next and uh, just talk about how we have that set up. All right, guys, now we're going to talk about wiring. Now, the cool part about this, like Old Town really has it all dialed in. I don't know if Eli's going to be able to get in here for you guys, but if you can hear that. There's so many wires for that motor and battery. It's all organized and set up to where it's not going to get in the way when I want to install um, my transducer and my powering cord to my um, hummingbird. So really cool setup. All I did was fed it right through here. I didn't have to make any holes or anything like that. I just fed it right through here and came out of these holes. So it's really simple. I can adjust these bad boys. Um, I'll undrill this and actually show you how we set that up. Um, you probably don't think it's waterproof right here uh, right now, but it is completely waterproof. So let me just show you real quick. So really cool how they have it all organized down here for you, zip tied up and everything. Um, another really cool part is that you do not have to drill any holes in this kayak to install a transducer or, you know, to install the hummingbird. So let me just show you right here where I fed the cord through. So right here, everything is nice and flush. It's obviously at an angle for you guys so that you can see it. But all I did was just bent it up a little bit. I will be um, drilling this out and showing you guys how I installed my transducer, but that'll be a little bit later. So you just feed your transducer cord 
straight through that hole right there it's already built in is that not cool so you don't have to drill any holes it goes straight through and once we come over here i took this plate off which is a little bit loose that's part of our maintenance today it's going to be maintenance and updates a lot of things are loose on this kayak because like i said i've been using it for a year and a half straight and i haven't you know done any maintenance on it so i need to i should be taking better uh, care of this kayak but that's what today's video is about so i took this plate off and actually fed it through right here now old town has all these bad boys already set up for you there's actually an example right here that's how it's going to be water resistant so you're probably thinking how are my cords going to go through there without uh, any issues or any water getting in you have that little piece of i would say what is this styrofoam or what is that yeah, it's like foam. Yeah, like foam. foam. Yeah. So the cords are gonna feed through there and then close out as they get tighter. So it's just a really cool system. Um, I was kind of confused, but as soon as I um, took these screws off and dug into it, I was like, wow, that is really a unique feature. So look, look at that. When it's completely closed, only thing that can fit through there is the size of your wires. So really cool, very simple, and um, just an effective way to make everything look clean on your kayak. So I was really excited about that. I didn't have to buy any extra pieces. I just opened up my uh, hummingbird box and set everything up. Hey guys, I don't know if I was explaining that through hole um, wiring kit well to you guys. So I wanna actually show you. I already installed it over here and I don't wanna mess with it again. So I'm gonna show you on this side what it looked like when I took it off. So it's just three screws. And what I do need to do is make sure that I'm getting stainless um, steel screws. I did notice that those screws down there were rusting. Um, not only is that an eyesore, I don't think it's a good idea because it could break off eventually. So definitely need to get some stainless uh, steel screws, but I'm not afraid to make mistakes, guys. And it's definitely okay to not do everything perfect on your kayak, even though you get people bashing you sometimes. It's okay, man. Just fail forward, learn from it, and keep growing, guys. So look at that. It comes right out, and that's what I was talking about. So. You're probably wondering when you're riding on this kayak how those screws were um, keeping it waterproof. They have a little seal right here for those screws that keeps it a little bit more waterproof. And they also have that um, little foam that we were talking about as well. So you just replace that kit. You're not going to use that actual one. You replace it with one of these and you even have the extra little piece. So we'll actually replace it real quick just to show you. I'm going to put that on there. This one's nice and thick, so I feel like it'll help. And then boom, you would put that in. See how hard that is to push in? You push your wires through as well, and then all these will close up from the you know pressure of that other wire. Make sure our wire is through and already ready. So that would just go on there. Your wire would already be pulled through, and then you would just screw it right back on, and that's how it would go. So you would have your wire going through just like this one, but see, I don't know if you can zoom in on that. No water can get through right there. Little to no water. I'm not gonna say no water at all. Little to no water. I mean, you shouldn't be submerging the top of the kayak and water, you know, as is anyway. So let's keep it moving. Love that part. I think that was a really cool, unique feature. Just made it really easy for everybody to understand it again. If you don't get that, it actually has a description right there, which I needed. Like I seriously, I didn't get it at first. I was like, wait. So how about, do I need to poke a hole? No, it all comes right there. It's all ready for you, so. All right, guys, another major upgrade that I made to my kayak was my paddle. I had to make sure that it was a paddle that could take, you know, the strength of this kayak, take the length of it as well. And these paddles by Old Town, I mean, they get the job done, guys. So a really cool thing about it is it, you know, detaches into two pieces of, you know, a pole so I can fit it easily in my car. I also have a paddle holder on my roof, so I just throw it up there. It is very important that you have the right paddle with your kayak because if you have a small paddle, you won't be getting the, you know, a good turn radius. And if you have too long of a paddle, it'll just be a lot of work. So you wanna have the right length for the length of the kayak and your height. So make sure that when you are shopping for a paddle that you're, you know, talking to somebody and making sure that you get the right one. So another major upgrade that I made uh, is the wiring. Now this was around 165 bucks. I was gonna skip uh, this step and just straight wire it to my battery. But once I did a little research, I was told that if you do wire anything to this battery, it might interfere with your trolling motor and you do not want that on the water. So I run my um, Hummingbird Helix 9 completely separate from my trolling motor battery. So this actually allows my Hummingbird to just last a lot longer. I have a lot more trust in it. I should get, you know, some readings from my battery so I know what my voltage is, but I just have so much trust in these lithium batteries that 
you know, I don't really need a voltage reader, but on this smaller battery, that Helix 9, that down imaging and side imaging, that will cost you a full day of, you know, a 12 volt, 23 amp battery. So I do charge this little battery every time I go out just so I don't run out, but I've never actually ran out of juice on the water. I just feel like, you know, you need to charge it every day, but really cool. I usually just sit in here like this, set it like that and it doesn't move around until I have to put it on the roof and then it slides all the way to the back that is the problem so super cool and then I just keep this cap right here for the battery and that other cord always just try to keep that uh, with me so when I do take uh, those cords apart that I can just put it right back together so all right guys so another thing that I want to talk about is scupper plugs man now there is certain ones that you should buy and I'm gonna be leaving these down below you can use these two big ones now I like to use these two big ones right here so I like to use these two big ones right here I never really take those out I never really take these back ones out at all honestly but you just put those bad boys in right there and I think it's really cool that it has that handle right there so you can take them out I love that these are probably the best ones uh, for this kayak. They all fit with no problem. And there's also one right here under the battery that I put right there. Again, I do love that I can just easily take it out, let all that dirt and uh, water out. And you got five up here. Now, I don't really use these during the summer because I like to keep my kayak floor clean. And if you have these in, throughout you know wild sins and, and stuff like that you just get so much mud and dirt and stuff on this floor and it's just i don't know it's an eyesore to me so i love that water coming through keeping my feet cool and washing the bottom of my boat uh, throughout the entire day all right guys so another thing that i want to talk about which i would consider an upgrade is making sure that i have an extra remote with me guys so you never know what could happen on the water not only do i have an extra remote i have an extra prop with me because things can get wild out there. And then I also have a whole extra kill switch, guys. So I just make sure that I'm prepared. Uh, again, this is like five bucks, two bucks right here. Little things like this will really save you time on the water. So seven bucks or being stuck on the water, I definitely will pay that extra money to make sure that I have an extra remote and extra kill switches and things like that. Now the price of this remote is a little bit cheaper, but being stuck out on that water is not a joke. Yeah, guys, and that's just really important to me. I feel like having an extra remote prop and a kill switch is just important. It's like a necessity out on the water. You have to have extra things. Same with rods, tackle, and things like that. Why not have extra um, accessories on the water? So let's get to the back of it and show you one of my favorite upgrades it looks amazing and it is extremely useful guys so this bad boy right here uh, again i don't have the exact information on what it is or uh, who made it but it will be linked down below with the exact link and where i got it from guys so first thing that you do is all you have to do is put it on there it's like the simplest easiest installation ever guys like look at that boom it's already on there you just tighten that bad boy down yeah when i saw this i think it was like 35 to 40 bucks and i was like i'm buying it right on the spot i bought the display one that's how bad i wanted it so all we do is just put it in there and it has that little piece of rubber let me see all right look at that look at that right there looks weird huh like what in the world is this check me out cha ching bro look at that strap goes right over strap goes right over and you have a place for your measuring board. Really sturdy. Has, I haven't had a problem with it on my roof at all. I actually ride with it like this on my roof. I just make sure that these bad boys are tight like that. And it just, it's not gonna move, man. If the wind does blow it like this, it's gonna have to stop right there, right? So I've never even had a problem where it slid all the way down on the roof, 20 mile per hour, 15 mile per hour winds. Never had an issue with this bad boy. So I love it. It's just a great place for it to be. It looks awesome. And I know where it's at all the time. Um, I don't want it, you know, sitting on the side right here. I don't want it wedged up. This is just a perfect flush way to uh, have your measuring board. So love it, guys. This is just one of my favorite upgrades. And let's keep going, guys. Let's keep going. Quadlock is just a really cool company. And they ended up making the Quadlock 360 this year, which is just unbelievable, guys. It is new, brand new product. And I'm just in love with it. You guys are going to see a lot of professional anglers using this now. And it's going to trinkle down into the kayak industry now. A really cool part about this technology is, look at this right here. So that bad boy right there goes onto your phone, comes with an iPhone case, just like that. The case comes with it. And then you just put it on there and it stays just like that guys. So as soon as I connect it, it's gonna start charging the phone. Now obviously it's not charging now because nothing's plugged in. But the cool part about it is it is a waterproof 
charging kit, man. Like you just don't see that on the market and I think it is just really cool, guys. Now, let me show you something. All I did to install this was I drilled two holes right here. You do not have to drill holes. They have adhesive, flexible um, mounts. There's so many different ways to mount this that um, whether it be a bike, a car, a boat, they have all the accessories for you guys. So I just love that I can move this. Uh, I can move my phone from my car to my boat to my kayak with ease guys so just staying on the water fully charged is unbelievable but being able to see where my phone is at all times is just a whole it's just a whole nother game changer so let me just show you how i installed this um all i did was put it on there right tighten this bad boy down like that ant big old ant on me and then you just tighten that bad boy down now with different ways to adjust it not just from the base but from the head as well yeah it just gives you full control of exactly where you want um, your phone at so I love it like that you can tighten it down to where it won't move at all like I just go harder and it won't move at all um, I've never had any issues with it bending the frame it's just really cool how it fits just right there in that spot and it doesn't get in the way of anything so all you have to do is push down on it like that turn and then it locks in, man. Look how flush that looks. I'm gonna have the graph up there. It's gonna look even better, guys. So once you have that on there, it's nice and flush. You know where your phone is. And if you have, you know, the face uh, identification, it's just right there in front of your face. So when you do need to look at it, it's gonna get your face, unlock the phone, and you have clear access. You just turn it right back off. No issues. You know where your phone is at at all times. And um, it's just a really cool thing that I like about it. So this is how it works. Turn that bad boy on and look. So we just plug it into here and it has these ridges. So those right there help that to be waterproof, guys. So plug it in and I would say water resistant. I mean, I don't think anything in this world is 100% waterproof, but I mean, it gets pretty in there, guys. So there you go. And it just says charging. Is that not cool? That is just unique, man. It's just something that's never, that I've never seen on a kayak. And I think it just looks flush. It looks great. And it's just something that brings more life, literally, to the kayak, guys. So this is where I would have it if it wasn't plugged into that box. I just have it like this, plugged into here. And ideally, it would turn on and charge it. See, I keep a little short cord. You can even kind of get that a little bit tighter and it'd be right there. All right, guys, so now we're going to get into the game changer of this kayak, the things that have been just making this year so much more enjoyable out on the water. Not only does this kayak make it really enjoyable and the technology, but when I got this graph, when I got this Helix 9 and got that side imaging and down imaging for the first time, it opened up a whole nother world of fishing. It completely changed everything. Now I know the water temp, depth, structure. I know when these fish are moving, I can save spots. I can do so many more things that I can't even fit in this video, guys. But the Helix 9 is just more than enough, guys. You can go down to the Helix 7. You don't need a big screen like this. I use it for uh, demonstration purposes, but you can go a size down from this, guys. So let me just show you a really cool thing. Uh, what it comes with when you take it out of the box is it's going to come with the Hummingbird Helix 9, of course. Just like that. It's obviously dirty because like I said, I put things to use before um, I go out here and talk about them. But it's going to come with this really nice case that looks really good uh, when you're not using it. Clamps right into there. Let me see. I've only done this once or twice, so bear with me. I usually don't take the whole thing off. Easily can adjust it if I want it way down like that. You know, you can have it any way that you want. That's why I love it. Turn it like this anyway or when I have it on the highway sometimes I'll have it down like that so it's not blowing away or that you know face doesn't come off now I've been struggling with tackle boxes for a long time let me actually show you what I was using before one second these are so beat up like look at this seriously hanging on for dear life like I waited till the last minute to upgrade everything like look at that that just all of these boxes are different and then this guy has just been taking care of me for the most part but look at that guys so it is time to upgrade so i looked into it a lot and i was like all right guys I, I gotta do it i gotta upgrade i gotta completely switch i am not affiliated with these guys at all seriously like i bought this with my own money with my own time and um i'm really proud of it guys i seriously am proud of it i started with just this guy and then I'm like just a small one for, you know, my terminal because I was getting all my hooks rusted from using just the regular other boxes that didn't have any sealant or anything like that. And by the time I wanted to use my Texas rig hooks, they would all be rusted and I just didn't have confidence in that. 
Now, boys, you're actually seeing the first time uh, me putting all these in here. See, some of these are new. I haven't even put the tackle in there, but I am hoping that these fit in there nice and neat. All right, there we go. I'm already liking that. See? I'll put this one right here. Now we already need some more tackle boxes. See, this never stops. Now I need two more right here and everything will be aligned. So when I'm in the kayak and I'm looking back, I can easily see all of my tackle like this. Now imagine if it was all, you know, like this and you'd have to kind of like look down. Like when I'm looking back to my kayak, it's all eye level. I know, I know, I'm just saying, I feel like those little details do make a difference, guys. So I switched over, haven't fully converted yet, but I just feel like these are the way to go, guys. So super stoked about that. All right, guys, so that is the upgrades on the Autopilot Sportsman 120, man. This kayak is unbelievable as it is. You don't need to make any adjustments to it, but if you want to, that is what you would do, man. Like, that's personally what I would change. Now, first off, I would definitely change that battery. You have to get a lithium battery. If there's, if there's one thing you want to put on this kayak, you put a lithium battery. Everything else is all up to you guys. Now, if you have any kind of twist or anything that you want to put on this kayak that you think would be, you know, a necessity, please let me know down in the comments. I know that this could be overkill. Honestly, at the end of the day, for a content creator who travels all around the US, all of these things are a necessity for me to uh, get high quality content for you guys. So this is just uh, my opinion on what I would upgrade on it. Please let me know down in the comments. Let me know if you think it's an awesome idea. Let me know if you think it's overpriced. But let me know if you think nothing at all. Just say, I don't know. And down in the comments, say something, man. Eli, you're awesome. Shield, Old Town, Under Armour fat tire all you guys are awesome thank everybody for coming together to make this channel and my dream come true of full-time fishing guys we have a lot more content coming for you guys you don't have to subscribe but you do have to get out of here <laughs>